Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about how to write a Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations find method. Now, you may think a find method's uh, pretty small, but they're extremely important. They allow a developer to select a specific and unique record on a table. And after we have that record, we can read from it, we can update it, we can uh, delete that record, um, all using that the results of this find method. And basically, a developer could write a select statement every single time they need to get a particular record. Um, but if you have a find method, you can put that select statement and the associated code into it, and then you can reuse it over and over again, which if you're creating a table, most of the time you want to uh, read it or update it or delete that record at some point through code. Um, so it's really, really useful to have a find method. Um, so basically, if you are ever creating a new table, um, you should make sure you add a find method. Or if you're working with an existing table, you should look for the find method on that table and make sure you're calling that instead of writing your own select statement. It'll save you a lot of time. And let's look at why. So um, if let's start with an example. If I search in the Application Explorer for Cust table, I can see um, there exists a table. This is the table that contains all of the customers. I can right click and say, open designer and this is going to up uh, open a designer page with the cus table under methods i can actually look for find and sometimes you'll find a few different ones we can actually see that there's a lot on here specifically we're going to look at just the one called find that's usually the one you want to look for but it kind of depends on what information maybe you have um, to help find that record if I right click and say view code, it will bring up in a code editor window the find method for cuss table. Now, what this does is really pretty simple. In the end, it is a select statement. It's a select first only statement that's designed to find a unique record. Um, but there's several advantages of having this find method. One is this select statement's already written for me and the developer has figured out which unique um, columns, which fields we should filter on to get a unique record. So in this case, uh, the unique field on cust table is account num. But instead of uh, me having to maybe look that up um, as a developer and look at the indexes and try to find out, oh, yep, account uh, IDX is a unique index and account num is the field that's on it. Um, if I'm just working with a find method and I use IntelliSense to see what I need to pass in, I know exactly what I need to pass in um, in order to uh, find a unique record. And so th that's really useful. The next piece about a find method is they all have a for update parameter. This for updates a second parameter. It has a default value of false. And so if we don't pass it in, um, nothing will change. It won't actually call this line of code. It will just run the select statement, grab the value, grab all the uh, data in this one particular record, store it in a table buffer variable and return that table buffer variable to um, the calling method so that that code can read values off that column. So a find method at uh, the basic level is just a finder. It just finds a record so that you can read it. However, if we pass in true for the second parameter, it's actually this code's going to call select for update on this table buffer. And um, it's going to basically act as if we had written select first only for update and then the cus table. And what that does is it locks this table um, at a SQL Server level and, and makes it so no other processes can write to this table um, until we're done with it. 
Um, and so that, that's really useful and we need to do that in order to update or delete a record. If we don't pass uh, for update and call this select for update method on it, um, then the system won't allow us to call dot update method or dot delete method on this table buffer. What we will actually get an error. Um, so these are the basic kind of uh, blueprints of a find method. We always have a select statement. We always pass in a parameter um, for the particular field that we're filtering on. We always check to see if the developer actually passed in a non-blank value because we don't want to bother running this select statement if they passed in a blank value by accident. That just quickly, uh, th that'll never find a record. So we want to return an empty table buffer quickly. Um, and then we also have this for update. We always default it to false. But then if a, you know, the calling method passes in true, we're going to call select for update and make sure that this record is found in a way that we actually can call update or delete later on. So let's look at an example. Let's pretend we want to um, call our own. So uh, in a previous article and video, I created a table called tut for tutorial um, car. And if I right click and say open designer, I can look at a few different things. One, I can see whether it has a find method on it or not. I actually just created one, um, so that's why it's there. Uh, um, but if it doesn't, we can create our own. And then I can also look at the indexes. And in order to write a find method, I do need to know um, any unique index on this table. So I can see that this index has allowed duplicate set to no. And so, um, and this is the one field that makes up this index. So I know if I have a value um, and I filter my where clause on car ID that I'm gonna find a unique record. Um, I can also see car ID and what extended data type it uses. All right, now if I wanna add a find method, let's say I didn't have this here, um, I could delete it um, to start out and then I can actually right click and say new method to create a new one or I can right click on the table itself and say view code and it'll open up the code window for this table. Now the best way to create a find method is to just start with an example and copy from it. So I'm actually going to go back to our cuss table example right here and I'm going to copy all of this code. Then I'm going to go back to our tut car um, code behind class. This is just a class and I'm going to paste in our find method. If I actually save it right now, this code does still compile. It's just finding a uh, record from a different table, not the table we're interested in calling. So the first thing that I can do is I can actually replace anywhere that it says cuss table with the name of my table as a type. So it's going to return a type uh, of table buffer of type toot car um, and then same thing here. And then anywhere I've got a variable, um, I'm going to rename it um, tutorial car as well, just with a lower case. So I'll do that here and here and here and here. So now we're doing pretty well. We're selecting a record, but notice our where clause is wrong. I want a parameter that passes in the correct um, value so that I can actually filter on it. So I know I need this to be a car ID because I looked up and found that that's the unique index. And then I would want my variable to kind of match that. So I'd want it to be named car ID. So let me go ahead and change the variable name that I pass in. And then I need to make sure the extended data type of the variable I'm passing in also matches. So, you know, underlying it's a string, but it's actually called tut car ID as well. That's just the extended data type that I have on um, this table if I open it back up and look right here. So that's what I'm going to use um, in my code. 
All right. We're getting pretty close though. There's still this index hint. Um, index hints are still left over in the system, but you should really just get rid of them for any code that you're writing. It's recommended that we don't add any index hints. SQL Server database is able to determine which index is the best one to use to quickly find the record. So I just got rid of that and everything else is the same. We can leave this for update false parameter. We can leave this code um, here once we've replaced this variable and uh, we're all set. So how do we actually call this um, find method? We can again look at an example. <clears throat> for cust table, I can actually go over to this class called retail transaction service customer and there's a method called update customer um, fiscal book, I think is what it's called. Let's see, update customer fiscal code. Um, and I can right click on this and say view code. And it'll actually open an example. You don't have to follow along, but this code's gonna do a bunch of things. Um, but specifically, it's actually going to use the find method on cus table and it's going to find the record by passing in an account num value. In this case, it's going to do more than read the record. Um, it, if we need to update or delete the record, we need to pass in true as the for update uh, parameter. So it passes in true and returns a table buffer variable. Then it's going to update the fiscal code in this case and call the update method. And this whole thing is surrounded by a TTS begin and a TTS commit. And so once we hit this TTS commit, if it's the last TTS commit in a nested um, grouping of TTS commits, it will actually save and write that data to the underlying database. So here's one example. Let's say we wanted to create our own. We could create a runnable class slash job. So we can go in and say, add new item, um, select Dynamics 365, runnable class, and then in my case, I just called mine find method job. So you can do that if you're following along and then click add. In, in my case, uh, I'll just open the one I already created. And then here we go. Here's an example of how we might call the find method and use it to update a record. We call uh, tutorial car and then we do colon colon. So colon colon in X++ indicates that we're going to call a static method. And so uh, st uh, find methods are always static methods. So we do that and we can find the car. And then if I delete and re-add this parentheses, I can see what parameters it's expecting. It's expecting a car ID and then an option optional parameter for for update. So let's just pretend I have a record where uh, the car ID is set to car one. I could pass that in and true. And then I'm going to get a value out. Really best practice, I should check to see if this um, table buffer contains anything before I try to update it. And then um, if it does, I can call TTS begin and then TTS, whoops, commit at the end here. Um, I can then set a field to be something different. In this case, the only other field on this table is description. I can set it to car one description or whatever I think it should be, then call update um, and then I'm done. So again, the find method, or, or really in summary, this find method is really, really useful. Um, instead of having to write a select statement every single time I need to get data, I need to, if I have to remember to write for update and I have to look up the unique key, um, I don't have to do any of that. I can just look for an existing find method on the table. Once it's written, I can use IntelliSense to have it tell me what data it's going to be filtering on and what data I need to pass in to be able to find a unique record. Um, and th then I'm all set. Um, I This line of code is much easier for me to read than a select statement where I don't understand if um, we're trying to find a unique record or, or maybe just one of many. Um, so it's definitely best practice to have a find method on every table that you create. Um, and now you know how to create them and how to use them. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. 
I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.